Thank you, Pippa. I'm Anna Lloyd and I'm Head of Education Technology. And I'm Mary Whiteside and I'm Digital Content Manager. So welcome to this webinar on the use of digital resources to support exam access. This topic of the webinar has been devised based on feedback we've received that you'd like us to focus more on how digital solutions can help you support your students preparing for exams. So here's an outline of what we're planning to cover today. Firstly, we'll give you a brief overview of some of the digital tools available. The resources, tools and content we're going to show you today will hopefully give you plenty of ideas and the confidence to experiment with other digital tools that are widely available. We will then show you how some digital tools can be used for developing learners' skills, such as reading, writing and vocabulary, and also how they can be used for exam preparation. The three tools we're going to show you today are called Padlet, Quizlet and Write and Improve. The examples we're using relate mostly to two of our exams, IELTS and Cambridge English First, but we'll also use a few other examples and the ideas could easily be adapted and applied to other exams. Then we'll look at how you can combine content from Cambridge English with digital tools and finally there'll be time for questions. Please go ahead and type any questions you think of into the chat box at any time. We'll try and address them as we go along, or we'll answer as many as we can at the end. Don't worry about noting down the details. We'll provide you with a full list of links at the end of the webinar. OK, so let's start with finding out what you think about digital tools. What word or phrase would you use to complete this sentence? Learning is with technology. Can you add your ideas in the text chat? What do you think about learning and teaching with technology? Do you think it helps or do you think it makes things more difficult? You can write a word or a phrase, whichever you think. Oh, any... Padlet, somebody asking about Padlet. OK, just, just have a go and say, tell us what you think about um, what, what digital tools add to learning. Easier. Easier. OK, good. Hopefully that's true. More interesting. Yes. More fun. Ah, lots of fun. OK. OK, great. Yep. More effective. Enhanced. Great. Different. Yes. Motivating. Supported. Wow, they're going quite fast. OK, well, these are all good. That's good. <laughs> there are lots of interesting comments here. Lots of you have said quite similar things as well. Lots of fun and motivated. Let's look at some ideas that we've thought of. OK, so, so here's one idea, that some teachers and learners may feel that learning is more interesting with technology, as a lot of you said. Um, of course, it's not that simple. Online tools can, but don't always make content more interesting. Uh, one of the things we're going to talk about today is what types of content are suited to using with tools. So let's move to the second statement. Another idea we had was that learning is more difficult with online tools. I know some of you said easier. Um, a lot of teachers, though, do feel worried about new, using new online tools. So we've tried to pick a few that are easy to use and that can be used over and over, so you're not always learning something new. OK, so another idea that came up was that learning is more effective with technology. I know some of you said enhanced. If you choose a tool that supports your aims, it can really help. But if you're just using something because it's available, then it, it may end up actually distracting the students from learning what they're supposed to be learning. Online tools are just the same as any other resource, really. Um, you need to think about what you want the student learners to take away from the lesson and then find the tools, resources and materials that can help with that. And finally, learning is slower with technology because it's time consuming to use technology. I think this one depends on how and why you're using digital tools and the content and task that you use in combination with them. We'll talk more about this today. So, when is it worth adding an online element to your teaching? So firstly, we think it's worth it when it adds value. Um, this seems obvious, but it isn't always easy to tell in advance whether, whether something new is going to add value or not to your teaching, until you've tried it out. Secondly, if it's worth the effort in learning how to use it and setting it up with your students. Again, sometimes you can't always tell in advance. But if you can learn how to use something once and then use it over and over again, then it's more likely to be worth the effort. Thirdly, um, it's worth using a digital tool when the technology enables you to do something that you couldn't normally do. 
Uh, for example, when a tool can give you more personalised feedback than you would ever have time to do. And finally, if it's more effective or efficient. This could include being able to target learning to the needs of an individual student, or it could mean doing something more quickly, or it might allow you to do something outside of class rather than in a lesson. So this could have a very positive impact on you as a teacher, as it might mean saving you time, which would give you more time to concentrate on thing, something technology can't do, teaching. So we've talked about what makes using digital tools worth it in terms of value, effectiveness and efficiency, but there are other considerations that always apply to any resource or activity. Um, firstly, is the content good? This means considering aspects such as relevance, validity and usefulness. And secondly, are your tasks and your aims clear? These are some of the aspects we're going to look at briefly today. Where to find the right kind of content and the right task types to use with the right tool. I'm sure a lot of you listening today will have lots of experience in preparing students for our exams. So and let's have a look at some of the issues and problems that teachers face when preparing students and see how we can help by using technology to add value, solve a problem or create teaching time in order to be useful in exam classes. So, to summarise, this is what we're going to focus on in this webinar. First, we'll look at some of the types of online tool there are. Then, we'll look in more detail at how to use three online tools and we'll give you a tour of the features. Then we'll show you where to find valuable content from Cambridge English. We'll talk about what you can find on the website and also briefly about the English vocabulary profile and explain how to combine this content with two specific tools. We'll show one or two examples, but the main idea is that you can see the potential and then find ways to combine good content and good tools yourself. And lastly, we'll give you some suggestions of where to find support for yourself so that you can be confident when trying out new technology in the classroom beyond the small number of things we can show you today. OK, so let's start by looking at what online tools are available, our first objective. So there are lots of online tools available for teachers to use with their classes. You've probably all seen Word Cloud tools such as Wordle or like this example by Taxedo for presenting vocabulary in a visual way. Another popular type of tool uh, is a quiz maker, for example, Quizzer. You type in questions for your learners and they complete the quiz. What other kinds of tools do you know? Just write your ideas in the text chat box now. We'll give you a minute to put your answers in. So in addition to the tools on the slide, what other tools are you familiar with? I know it'll depend a lot on your context, but some of you already said some of your ideas. So let's see what you can say. Maybe this is tools your colleagues have used or you've used. Maybe it's the tools we've just shown you. If any of you are using some different ones that you haven't seen mentioned in the chat box, it'd be useful for, your, for um, our other participants to hear about them. Ah, word clouds. OK, word clouds. Storybirds. Oh, yes, yes. Story, Storybird's a good tool. Prezi. Oh, another, uh, yep, a few Prezi's. Oh, Vokaroo for videos. Quizlet, hot potatoes. Okay, Moodle. Okay, lots of good ideas. Google tools. Yeah, it's great to see so many of you using so many different tools. Here's a list that we came up with. Obviously, there are lots more types of tools, so this is just some of them. Tools such as Wordle and Taxi Taxedo are word cloud generators. These can help you vary the way you present vocabulary. You just cut and paste the words into the box and they appear in an interesting shape. So quiz makers such as Quizzer can be a fun way to check students comprehension. And online notice boards are shared online pages where you and your learners can write ideas and pictures or questions. One example of this is Padlet which we'll look at in more detail in a minute. There are also collaborative word processing programs where you can share documents with your students or they can collaborate in groups to produce shared work. Auto markers, such as Write and Improve, are tools which give students feedback on their written work. Again, we'll have a look in a minute at this. And there are quite a few pronunciation apps you can explore. <clears throat> For example, Clear Speech, which gives students the chance to practice their pronunciation with games and activities. What do you think are the benefits of using these tools? Write your ideas in the chat box now. 
Lots of teachers use them, but what value do they add? Or maybe think about the, the tools that you've used, like Songbird, uh, Vocaroo. What are the benefits of using these tools with your students? Okay, don't, don't worry if you can't see the screen at the, at the moment. Um, we're just asking you to have a little think about what, what, how um, the tools that you use add value to your lessons, and we'll, we'll share the responses. YouTube, okay. Yeah, it's okay if you can't read what's on the slide. Uh, think about any online tools you use. Which ones do you use and why do you use them? So don't worry about reading what's on the slide. Okay, for independent study? Yep, for students to do outside of class. Engaging, yes. Oh, for personalisation, yep. Change of focus, that's a good idea. Yep, students are more involved. You can use authentic materials, good idea. Thanks for your ideas. I see that a lot of you mentioned that learners are used to using these tools and it can help with motivation. Here are some of our ideas for how technology can help. Motivation is one reason. Using digital tools can vary the materials and help with motivation. They can also develop learner autonomy. Learners can use a lot of these tools on their own. Some tools can help save you time by giving feedback to learners directly. They can check their own answers or get feedback directly from the tool. Another reason for using digital tools is that you have data from your learners. Lots of tools let you see who, exactly who has completed exercises how much they've done and what score they receive. And finally, when you've made a digital resource, you can use it again and again with new groups and new classes. So now let's have a look at some tools and ideas for how you can use them in your classes. In this section, we're going to look at three tools, Write and Improve, Padlet and Quizlet. For those who don't know what they are, Write and Improve is a program developed here in Cambridge. Padlet is a free online bulletin board program and Quizlet provides online learning tools for teachers and their classes. We'll talk about each one in a moment. These are only examples. There are lots of um, tools available and many of you will be using different tools as, as you were saying. We've just chosen these three as examples of their type. So let's start with a quick tour of Write and Improve. So this is the home page of Write and Improve, an online tool from Cambridge English Language Assessment. You need to register so that the system knows who you are but it's free. There's also a video on the home page which goes through all of the functionality so you can see exactly how it works. So we'll play this now. Welcome to Write and Improve. This is an exciting new tool for English learners that evaluates the quality of your writing and provides fast feedback. It's easy to use and you can even log in using your Facebook account. Once you've registered, simply choose your task, write or upload your text and submit your writing for feedback. Then try again, using your feedback to improve. To get started, choose a writing task from the list. The tasks are there to help you think of what to write. For example, you choose to write about the internet and websites. You won't be marked on your ability to answer the question, just your writing. Now simply enter your text in the box. If you're not quite ready to submit your writing, you can save and return to your work at any time. When you're ready, click Save and Submit. The system will then assess your writing. The top result is your overall score. This is assigned on a scale from red to green. Red is for text that looks like it may be at CEFR level B1 or below. And green shows evidence of being at CEFR level B2 or above. Under Detailed Feedback, there are three tabs, Combined, Error Feedback, and Sentence Feedback. Combined gives you all the details from Error Feedback and Sentence Feedback together. Error Feedback can be seen either by hovering over a red box or through clicking the tab. This shows specific words that have been used incorrectly, with explanations and suggested corrections. Sentence Feedback gives you an idea of the general quality of each sentence. The colours range from green to red via yellow and orange. Green suggests a well-written sentence. Yellow and orange suggest the system believes the sentence is acceptable. Red suggests the sentence may have a few problems. Working from this advice, you can amend and resubmit the text 
and measure any improvement. On the overall score scale, two arrows indicate results for the most recently assessed version and results for the previously assessed version, if there is one. Orange boxes around words suggest regions that may need particular attention and possibly correction, but for which the system can't give a specific suggestion. For instance, you might consider using have changed instead of change and using a capital I for internet rather than lowercase. Note that the system identifies a new error in the revised version of the text. As soon as the error in informations is corrected, it suggests correcting every to all. Using the suggestions from the system, you can gradually improve your writing. You can submit as many revisions as you'd like. The system will reassess your revisions and suggest corrections for each version. Write and Improve not only helps your own written English, but by taking part, you're contributing to a valuable research project that will benefit English learners around the world. So, as you've just seen, the main aim of Write and Improve is that students receive feedback and ideas on how to improve, so that they are then able to learn from their mistakes and resubmit a better attempt. This leads to not just better writing, but good editing and checking skills, and improved learner autonomy. As a teacher, you may choose to ask your students to print and copy and paste their final version, but they'll have hopefully made a lot of improvements be before they do that. The skill of improving and checking your own writing is an important skill to develop. It helps learners become independent, and of course it's especially important for students preparing for exams. So this tool is currently a beta site, as it's still in development and being used for research purposes. Um, but the more people who use it, the more accurate it'll, it'll get. So it's currently most accurate at B1 level. For those of you who are asking who marks the writing, it's, it's automatically marked. Um, the machine's been trained at B1 level, which is why it's most accurate there. Most of the scripts were at B1 level. But as more and more people use it, it'll become more accurate across the range. The second tool we've chosen to show you today is Padlet. There are other tools like this available or your institution may have a different collaboration tool. But any tool which is like a notice board or wall will work for the same types of task. Padlet is free, just go to the home page and sign up. It also has help available there for getting started. It's basically just a blank canvas that's very easy to use, which makes it perfect for using in combination with good content and tasks. When you've signed up, you just click on the icon on the right, indicated here, with the purple arrow that says create new Padlet. Then you'll see this page which is a blank screen and you can post anything you want. So here are some examples of how you can use Padlet. You and anyone who has a link to the board can post pictures or write something. In this example there's a word of the day, in this case fascinate, and learners have to write sentences using it. The teacher can comment what the students have said on the wall. Or you can use it for translation. You can put up the word or phrase in your learner's language and learners have to put the English translation next to it. You can also add pictures or audio to a Padlet board. Here's an example with pictures. One idea is for you to add pictures and ask learners to make a story using the pictures. What other ideas can you think of with pictures? Write some ideas in the chat box now. So when you put pictures on the notice board, what could you use them for? You could put one picture or several. They could be connected or different. Try and think of some of the ways you're, you already use pictures um, in your exam preparation classes. We'll just give you a minute to put your ideas in the chat box. OK, lots, lots of you like Padlet, that's good. It's a very versatile tool. Yep, you know, it is, uh, that's right, it's, it's similar to lots of collaboration tools like this. Your school may have its own as part of its VLE. Good to see people are, are using it, like Chintzia, using it with um, children in her primary class. So any more ideas about how you could use pictures? Labelling, great idea. Yep, adjectives, good idea. Yeah, introducing a topic. Comparison, sequencing. Uh, yeah, well, and someone's asked if we can write the site, so after the webinar you'll get links, all the links to the sites that we're showing you now. Comparing and contrasting, that's a good idea. Picture story, differences, yeah, you could put two similar pictures, find the differences. 
Thanks for those ideas. Now let's look at another tool. The third tool we're looking at today is called Quizlet. You register for free and enter the site. You can make online flashcards to introduce new language, to practice language you've taught and to test learners' knowledge. You can create classes on the site and give your students access to different sets of vocabulary for them to work on. After you've put in the words and pictures or definitions, you can then choose Learn and go to a flashcard. You can make your own flashcards or you can choose flashcards that are already made. There are 40 million sets on the site, so just use the search box to find the set with the language that you need. Here's an example where you have the word and picture. Quizlet automatically adds the audio so your learners can hear the pronunciation too. If you choose the test icon, Quizlet automatically makes questions using the vocabulary you put in. You can choose from written questions, matching multiple choice and true-false questions. So your students have several ways to practice. They can practice hearing, writing or matching the words. There are games too. In this game, learners have to drag the words to the pictures as quickly as possible. Your learners can see who can do this the quickest in the class as all, all the times are on a leaderboard. The example here is one we made using words from Cambridge English Young Learners Word List and Picture Bank. So we've talked a little bit about three particular tools you could use that we think fit our criteria of adding value. Write and Improve, Padlet and Quizlet. Now we're going to move on to look at where and how you can find good content to use with these tools. So there are lots of ready-made materials that you can find, but to make the materials suitable for your learners, you can add your own content. If your students are studying for a Cambridge English exam, they will need content which is suitable for the purpose. One place to find the suitable content is the Cambridge English website. So let's see what you are already familiar with from there. For example, we know sample papers are one of the most downloaded things on our site. But what other materials do you use from our website? For example, you might use sample papers, um, handbooks, vocabulary lists, <laughs> research, research articles. <laughs> Just have, have a write in the chat box of the things that you use from our site um, with your classes at the moment. Could be lesson plans, anything that you've used from our site. We'll just give you a second to put your ideas in the chat box. And it could be from our YouTube channel as well, of course. Yeah. As most of you probably know, you can search on our website for each exam and then there's resources. Um, and there's also a teacher resource section where you can search. So any ideas in the text chat? Speaking oh. videos, yes, definitely. Handbooks. Past papers, yep, lesson plans, vocab lists. Yes, sample speaking video with performance um, information. Yes, that's in the teacher resource binder. It's very useful. It gives you examples of the speaking test. Self-assessment test. Yes, we've got test your English. Test your English for young learners, for business. Yep. Flashcards. Yes. Yep. Great. Lots of people seem to be using the materials we have available. If you'd like to see more of this content, we'll send you links to everything after the webinar and Pippa will show you examples of this material later. So now we're going to look at some of these materials and show you how they combine with the tools we talked about. So let's start with the vocabulary lists. These are available at B1 level and below. The words are grouped alphabetically or by topic and for Cambridge English movers and starters we also have picture banks in the teacher resource finder on our website. One of the most useful of the resources available is the teacher's handbook. There are one or two sample papers in each handbook as well, as well as guidance for you as the teacher on a variety of aspects of the test, such as what to focus on when preparing your students, how each component is assessed. For B1 level and below, you can find language specifications in the handbook, which list the language that the tests are based on. Here's an example from the Cambridge English Preliminary for Schools handbook. It tells you the topics, functions and grammatical areas, for example, tenses or prepositions, which is very useful when it comes to finding content for using with online tools. You can find all the handbooks in the resource finder and we'll send you a link to this after the webinar. Here's another great source of content. This is the English vocabulary profile. It's free to register and very useful for teachers preparing students for any of our exams. It contains information about phrases, idioms and collocations, as well as the words themselves, organised according to the levels of the Common European Framework of Reference for Languages. 
It's based on the Cambridge Learner Corpus, which is a collection of several hundred thousand examination scripts, written by learners from all over the world. It's added to every year, so it provides a reliable source of information about which words and phrases, and importantly, which mean the meanings of those words, are known and used by learners at each level. There are a variety of ways you can search, by level, topic, part of speech, for example, and the information you get can be used in lots of ways. So far, we've looked separately at good tools and good content. Let's look now at how you can put these together. So, for example, using the English vocabulary profile, you can search for words by level and theme and various other groups. On this slide, you can see lots of themes to choose from in the drop-down box on the left. I'm going to choose People, Appearance. So here's what comes up. On this example, you have all the words and phrases from levels A1 to C1. Uh, you might find it useful to select a specific levels for your class. So here's the same topic, appearance, with words at B2 level only. So now we're going to look at an I one idea for how to use this with Padlet. After you've covered the relevant vocabulary of appearance in class, ask your learners to write one word each on a Padlet wall for homework. The rule is that they can't put the same word or phrase up as one which is already there, which means if they do it quickly, it's easier, as they can choose any word they want. But it gets more difficult as the board is filled up with words and they have to find a new one. Let's do an example to show you what I mean. On this board, we have language to describe people, and there are three groups about hair. Hair length, hairstyle, and hair colour. Can you type a word or phrase in the chat box to describe any of these? Remember that you need to write something different. So what words or phrases could you, could you use? If you can't see the slide, don't worry. It's three groups. It's hair length, hair style and hair colour. So what phrases can talk about any of those three things? Just think of any word or phrase that you could put in one of those columns. So hair style, hair length or hair colour. We'll, we'll apply the same rule that you would do if you were using it in class. So Try to put in the chat box something that no one else has already said. We'll just give you a second. Long, okay, yep. Okay, it's going to get harder as curly. you go along. Frizzy, curly, curly. Shoulder length. That's a good one. Chestnut. Oh, that's very good. <laughs> strawberry, strawberry blonde. Mid-length. Wavy, frizzy, fair. Dreadlocks. Wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, those are good ideas. Thanks for all of these. If you give learners this activity, it's a good way to expand their vocabulary and to encourage them to answer quickly. You can do this in the class or as homework. So here's another way you can use the vocabulary from English Profile or, or from a vocabulary list. You can choose a topic and use the words and add a translation. On this example, we're Portuguese. You can use all the ideas we showed you earlier, and here's an example of the test function. Here's another idea for using Padlet, this time combining it with a picture like one of those on Cambridge English sample papers. You can take a picture and then ask your students to brainstorm ideas around a picture as a preparatory task to do before a practice speaking test. Here I've put in my own picture and I've asked learners to write sentences about it. You can use pictures from sample papers for lots of reasons. You could use it to introduce new language, to raise interest in the topic, to help activate what learners already know, or as a way of eliciting new language. In this example, I was using the picture to pre-teach vocab and to see the vocabulary that my learners knew. So climb a tree is a very useful collocation. Hide is another item. Let's look now at an example of Padlet with a different aim. This time, time to help with writing and planning what to write. So, on this Padlet, I've added an image from a sample paper. Can anyone tell me what the exam it's from? You can choose from the list of exams that you can see in the poll. If you can't see the picture clearly, I'll tell you what it is. It's, it's a graph of the number of full-time and part-time students in education. Um, and you can't see the question, but I'll, t I'll tell you what it is. It asks students to describe what they see in 150 words. So do you think this is from Cambridge English Business Certificate exams or IELTS Part 1, Part 2 or Cambridge English First or Advanced? We'll just give you a second to try and answer the question in the poll. It's, qu it's quite hard. Some of them have similar tasks around um, describing graphs.
Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. A lot, lots of lots of guesses. Beck and IELTS. And lots of people saying IELTS part one. Quite IELTS, a few yep. saying business certificates as well. So that's right. Lots of you knew that this is an example of a task from IELTS part one. So you can also use Padlet to practice describing a graph. So here, an exam task for an IELTS or a Cambridge English business certificate exam as a collaborative writing task. In this example, the teacher has uploaded the graph, the task and the first sentence and then shared a link with the students so they can all go and write on the same Padlet. In this case, students all add another sentence or two that could be used to describe the graph. They might do this before the class as preparation, then work in pairs or groups to refine this into a proper piece of writing during class time when you, as teacher, are available to help. You could, of course, use this with Write and Improve as well. You could use Padlet as a way of collaborating and sharing ideas and then have the students do the actual task in Write and Improve where they will get personal score, personalised scoring and feedback on their own individual errors. And an idea which could follow on from preparing some topic vocabulary on a pa Padlet wall to practice in an exam writing task could be to set a writing task of your own on Write and Improve. Or you could choose one of the tasks there, especially if you're preparing students for Cambridge English First, and encourage your students to use the new target vocabulary that they have prepared via Padlet in their writing. OK, so we've talked about three online tools with very different features and a few ideas for finding content to use with them. Now we just want to summarise the main features of each one and share some more ideas. So don't forget that you can type your questions in the chat box at any time and we'll answer as many as we can at the end. So here's a reminder. Firstly, Write and Improve features writing tasks from Cambridge English First Level or students can choose their own tasks or you can give them a task. It gives the students personalised and automatic feedback and there is the opportunity for them to edit and resubmit their work as many times as they need. So this makes it good for focusing on individual issues as the system gives feedback on errors and each score is specific to the learner and the piece of writing. It encourages learner autonomy and improves their drafting and editing skills and it's a good way of providing lots of practice for students without requiring a lot of marking time. It can also encourage students to study at home as they find the immediate and automatic feedback a bit more motivating. So some other ways to, to use the tool include um, combining Write and Improve with Padlet, um, as we said in the example before. So use Padlet first for brainstorming and ideas and then Write and Improve for individual writing practice using those ideas. You can also use Write and Improve for pair work. For example, you could ask students to work together to improve a piece of writing based on the feedback from the first draft they have submitted. You can also ask students to focus on a specific aspect of writing, for example, accurate spelling, and then aim for no errors in that area. Now, a summary of Padlet. Padlet is a very simple tool to use. You can set it up in a few minutes, and all you need to do is send a link to your students. Also, you can include all the different media types you might need for exam preparation text, video, audio and images. For example, you can give your students a link to a speaking test video. Your students can add files of all kinds themselves. So this makes it especially good for brainstorming ideas, uh, vocabulary around a topic or image, opening sentences for an essay, lots of the suggestions you had earlier. If you're lucky enough to have students with laptops or tablets, um, or a projector and internet yourself, then you can always refer to the Padlet in the classroom, or you can always take a screenshot of it before you start. For example, you can set brainstorming as homework, preparation, and then collaborative writing based on those ideas in class. It's also an easy way to distribute an image, video, or audio file to your students, um, and also a good way to collect their video or audio responses. For example, you could put a speaking prompt on Padlet and then ask students to record their own answers in pair pairs and upload the response. Or you can include a speaking test video from us and ask students to comment on good language they notice or on areas that they think could be improved. Padlets are individual sites so you can save them for reference later or use the same prompt for a variety of tasks expanding what you did earlier. For example homework one could involve brainstorming words around a picture and homework two could be writing sentences using those words. 
And lastly, just to summarise Quizlet. Quizlet allows you to create flashcards and other matching activities for learning and use this same content in a variety of games and quizzes. This makes it good for making practice a bit less boring for students, especially things like vocabulary that need to be reviewed again and again. Um, Quizlet is also good for creating content you can reuse with the same class and subsequent classes. Um, once you've created the set, it's always available for you to use again. Uh, Quizlet is also good for practicing at home, creating for more time for teaching in the classroom. Finally, let's have a look at how you can get support for working with online tools. Probably the best thing to do is you, if you need help is to start with all the help on the websites. So watch all the videos, read all the FAQs before you start. Padlet, Quizlet and Write and Improve all have this kind of information. The next place to start if, if you want to find more online tools or more ideas for using them is just YouTube or Google, especially for well-known tools like Padlet. I did a quick search and found thousands of videos about Padlet, mo mostly uploaded by teachers. Here's the information you can find on the Padlet site. It tells you what Padlet can do and gives you examples to help you see what it looks like. Quizlet also has lots of information. It explains the different formats you can choose to create your study sets and all the various practice features, tests and games that your students can do. And explains how it works. Just go to the website to learn more. We'll send you all the links after the webinar so you can look at these sites for yourself. Finally, here are the references for the sites we've mentioned and looked at. We'll send these links to you as well, so don't worry if you don't have time to write them all down now. And of course, the links to the Cambridge English website, teacher resource pages and YouTube channel. We've really enjoyed sharing all these ideas with you today, but now we'll pass you back to Pippa, who's going to talk about some more ways that Cambridge English Language Assessment can help you. Then we'll answer any questions you may have about today's webinar. So please type in any questions you have about what we've talked about in the text chat and when we come back we'll do our best to answer as many as possible. Thank you. Okay, hello again, this is Pippa. Again, remember I'm on audio only so you can't see me. Um, while I'm talking to you about some more resources, please do continue to send in your questions. You don't need to send questions that you've already sent, but any new questions you've got, please send them in now and Anna and Mary will have a chance to look at them and answer them in a minute. Okay, so I put on the screen a list of some of the resources that um, we offer at Cambridge English. Um, all of these materials listed are free for you to use and we're going to go through very quickly and make a quick tour and remember that we will send you all of the links that we're talking about today by email, so you don't need to worry about that. Okay, so here's a screenshot from the Cambridge English website, and this shows our resource finder. So you can find specific lesson plans and resources, and this is also, a lot of you were asking about the handbooks, this is also where you can find um, handbooks for all of our lessons, all of our exams, and they're all freely available, okay? So uh, if you click on the Teach English tab, and then on the left-hand side on the resources for teachers um, in the left-hand menu, um, and then you can type in, for example, which uh, exam you're looking for, or your CFR level, etc., as shown in the red box. So if you search this site by, um, by um, exam, for example, you can find the preparation page. Um, and here's the page for the Cambridge English Movers um, test, the YLE test. And you can find sample papers, there's support for candidates, FAQs. You can see a range of things on the slide. Now we also have lots of, lots of digital um, exam preparation materials available um, and these are available at the web address on the bottom of the slide that I've shown you there um, and one of these is TestBank. Now TestBank is a paid for resource but it is really, really useful. Um, they are official practice tests online for students who are going to take computer based tests um, and the reading and listening is auto-marked and gets automatic instant re reporting. And it's available for five of our key English exams um, and more are coming soon. So go to that web address at the bottom of the screen to find out if it covers the tests that you're teaching and to get more information. Some other digital resources that are available are World Fun app, Fun World app. And this is currently available for free. You can download it from Google Play and the Apple App Store. 
Um, so this is great for Cambridge English Young Learners tests. Children and parents will really enjoy it. And it's also great for anybody, really, who wants to um, learn the first 1,000 words in English. We've also got um, e-books for tablets, um, which are available for first, advanced, and IELTS 4 to, uh, four to 5. And these are interactive versions of students' books and workbooks for tablets. And you can download sample um, on, from iBooks now. Online workbooks are also now available if you're using any of our for schools exams. So these are really flexible, they're self-marking, you could use them for homework. Um, some of these are available for key for schools, um, first for schools, etc. You can see a list of the courses on the screen. We've also got Presentation Plus. This is a powerful new digital platform, which means you can access all the resources that you need from the same place. There's an interactive, interactive whiteboard tools, students' book, teachers' resources, and so on. And there's lots of information available about that on our website as well. Moving away from things for your students, here's something which is for you, the teachers, Cambridge English Teacher. Um, it's a great resource, this. I'm sure lots of you already know it. Um, it's a professional membership for English teachers from Cambridge English Language Assessment. You can see lots of the resources available to you on the screen, courses, contact with experts and so on. And also at the bottom, please note that if you join now or if you renew now, you'll get a 10% off your membership between today and the end of November. So do make the most of that great resource. Right, that's it from me. I will now pass you back to Anna and Mary, who are preparing to answer your questions. Thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed the webinar. OK, thanks, Pippa. Um, so we've got lots of questions. Um, I don't think we'll have time to answer them all, but we'll try and answer as many as we can, or, or we'll choose a group of um, questions to answer together. So there's lots of questions here about um, are they free. So the ones we showed you today are free. Um, they may have a paid-for version or premium things that you can buy if you want to, but they're all accessible for free um, for you and your students. So um, some specific questions about Padlet here. Um, can I use Padlet offline? Um, I don't think you can, actually. I think for this one you do have to be online. If you've got internet connection, if your students can't do it for homework, you can always do it in the class only. Um, also, another question about Padlet is... Are the notice board notice boards private? I I'd have to double check on the on the Padlet page. It will give you more information. I think they're not private, so that's a really important thing to be aware of. Thinking about your students, if you've got younger learners, maybe ask them not to put their their full names, just to put either nicknames or their first names. Um, there's lots of you asking whether you can use. Um these things for teaching uh, other subjects in English, but for CLIL, or perhaps you're teaching other languages as well. So Write and Improve is for English learning. Um, you know, that's what the machine's been designed to do, and it's automatic. Um, but Padlet and Quizlet are used quite widely across teaching um, right primary and secondary, all different subjects. In fact, you know, they're mainly used um, by teachers of other subjects in school. Yeah, in fact, to go back to Pad Padlet, um, I know someone who teaches geography told me that she puts up um, the name of a country and then all the students have to write one fact about that country, um, same rule as our rule, without repeating the fact. So yeah, you can use it for lots of different subjects. I think it's, it's quite nice for presentation and project work, where they might want to do all their preparation um, and use the palette for presentation. Um, and there's an a interesting question here about how practical and effective is it to use these resources? Um, keeping in mind the unavoidable situations re regarding technology. Yep, I think that's really uh, an important thing to think about. Plan for what you'll do if the technology doesn't work. These are great tools, but if there's internet connection problems, try and think, what can I do very quickly that would be um, filling the gap between getting the connection back again? And, you know, I think, I think we'd both say that, you know, if, if you're not confident or you haven't used it before, we'll always have a few practices Otherwise, you know, it's difficult to concentrate on your teaching. You're just worrying about the technology all the time. And you can also ask your learners to show you a tool that they really like. If you don't feel confident about using a new tool yourself, that can be a really nice thing to do. You ask all your students to bring in one tool that they found really useful and then they show everyone else what it is. Um, just having a look through. Um, which tools are good for primary? Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, I think, I think probably, 
I quite like Quizlet because it's got games on it. Um, so I think any any with games would be particularly useful for primary. But it depends on what your students like, what they're interested in. Maybe try different things, see what appeals to them. You might you might remember, but earlier in the webinar we showed you one of the um, Quizlet tools where the students um, have to race to match the word to the picture it goes across the screen and they have to get a high score. I think that's a, that's a very good one for young learners. And older learners too. Yeah, <laughs> it's good to have a target. Um, teaching individuals. Someone's asked if these would be suitable for individuals. Um, yep, definitely. The, the great thing is you can make the content, you can make your own content so it can match an individual student's need. Also, it will add, add variety to any lesson, whether that's with a group or an individual. So there's someone asking about what the data, um, what Cambridge will use the data for with Write and Improve. It just trains the machine. So every writing sample that people um, put in to have assessed in Write and Improve helps the machine um, learn and become more accurate. Um, so it is quite accurate at B1 level at the moment, as I already said, but as more and more samples from higher and lower ones come in, it will automatically start to make the machine more accurate for everybody. Um, and I think another uh, question, I know we've answered it, but it's, it's worth saying this again. Someone's asked if the tools are free or do you have to buy a license? So all these tools that we've shown you have a free version. We've just shown you things that you can use with a free version. They often have a paid for version too, but these ones um, are still useful with the free version without licenses. Um, it's asked if the student should register. So not for um, Padlet and Quizlet, you, the teacher registers and then you can send your students a link. Um, so they don't need to register for that one. And for Write and Improve, I think just the teacher registers again. So, this, um, yeah, well you could check what, if you want to, all your students to practice Write and Improve by themselves at home, um, they'll need to sign up just so that the system knows who they are when they go back. Um, and if you want to see their results, um, it doesn't have a teacher function. So uh, that's what we were saying earlier, that you might want your students to send you a final copy or copy and paste it for you or print it off. But the idea is that they refine it by themselves before that point. Um, and here's a question about web quests. Are they an effective online tool or is it outdated? Um, I think they're, I think web quests are really useful. You can make... So a web quest, when you, you tell students to go to a site and find certain information, um, it's very useful to get them to get students finding information because that's a lot of what they use the internet for. So no, I think that's um, I, th I think that's good to use. Okay, there's someone asking whether the handbooks and lesson plans we were talking about are free. So that they're, they're all free. Um, they're on our site at Cambridge English. Um, that you can go to the section for teachers and search for teacher resources. You put in your exam and what kind of resource you're looking for, handbook or sample paper, and then you, you'll get a link to all the resources that we have. Um, and there's a question here about resources to develop phonics and literacy. Um, so yes, there are, there are resources for this. Um, I think, for example, maybe on the BBC, the skills-wise, there's some free resources there. Um, if you Google, there's, there's lots out there, so have a look and see what you can find. Mm, okay. Ah, so how can you use these in the classroom if students don't have access to computers? Yes, that's a... Um, an interesting question. So you've got different options. If you're in a situation where all the students have some kind of device that they're given, then of course you can just use that. If you have um, a policy where all the students can bring their own device in, then maybe they could all use different um, devices depending on what they've got. If, if your students aren't allowed to bring devices in, or it's not uh, possible for them to, you can demonstrate these with a projector um, or on a single device if you have them. So yeah, I mean these can also be used for collaborative group work in the classroom. So if you only have one or two computers, um, teachers often use you know rotating time. So each group has some time on the computer to work on their Padlet that they might want to use for then a presentation for the whole group. And of course one of the one of the most beneficial things about these is you can ask students to spend time preparing outside of class um, the things that you don't really need to do in class. So if they do have more access at home or libraries or internet cafes, 
you can do some of it out of class and then um, just as preparation. Um, there's some questions about Quizlet in being available in other languages. Um, I think I think you do have the option of other languages. I've only used it for English, so um, I'm not very familiar with the other languages. But yes, there it is possible, and I think it's got the pronunciation as well. Oh, yeah, lots of people asking about that. Yep. So no, um, I don't think any of these work offline, those of you who are asking about it. Um, but with Padlet especially, if you've asked people to do some preparation work, to, uh, either in class together or for homework, then, then you can always take a screenshot or a print for use in class if you don't have access there. Um, someone's asked about um, developing ESOL literacy at very low levels, like E1 literacy. Um, I think maybe a nice tool for this might be something like Padlet. If you had, a, say, you had a picture of a person, students will have to write one word to describe that person. When they come to the class, they can have all the words on the board in front of them and copy them down, rather than having to think of lots of words by themselves. They can practice copying from the board into their notebooks. Also, Quizlet. I think if, if you could, uh, for Quizlet, it might be nice for literacy students because you can choose whether you have words or pictures so if you want them to practice whole word recognition you could put actually the word and the, uh, repeat the words so they have to match them together. There's someone here asking about how you can tell if um, uh, materials are, are authentic um, so the, the obvious thing is to go to our website because everything there is free um, and we add content all the time um, and if, if it's on our website, you can be sure that it's suitable for the exam you're preparing for. Yes, on the teaching uh, on the teaching English page, the resource finder that Pippa showed you, you can choose by exam, so you can see all the materials for each exam. And I, th I think the last thing to say is that those of you who are interested in receiving those sort of resources, you can sign up for our teacher newsletter. That that's free as well. Um, and then every time there's new resources or we're featuring new resources, you'll get an email with the links in it to, to all the resources on our site. I think that's all we have time for. So thank you very much for attending today. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at our future webinars. The next webinar coming up is on supporting mixed ability learners at Cambridge English Key and preliminary levels, speaking and listening skills.